what age did you discover you had a passion for strength and conditioning? Yeah, for me, it sort of started with swimming. Um, I was actually working as a pool lifeguard at a, at a private facility and um, there's some really good athletes training there. It was a squad funded by the VIS, uh, the Victoria Institute of Sport. And, um, you know, I was, I was just a, a casual lifeguard and uh, just finished my degree at the time. And uh, one of the coaches, Rowan Taylor, who's actually the head coach of the Australian swim team now, um, was coaching that squad. I had sort of kids from... Um, you know, 14, 15 through to um, open national swimmers who, who competed, um, obviously, at the Olympics and world champs and that sort of thing. Um, so he said to me, would you be interested in, in coming on board as an s and coach with, um, we need to replace one. So I um, obviously jumped at the opportunity. Um, you know, I, I was pretty raw at the time, didn't know too much. And, um, you yeah, know, I made a lot of mistakes along the way. And I look back on some of those programs that I wrote early on and, um, and scratch my head and shake my head. It's just, um, you know, as you do as a young strength and conditioning coach, make mistakes and learn from them. And um, Rowan was really good. He gave me um, free reign of the squad to sort of implement whatever I wanted to implement. For those that are not aware of how rehab works, what, what would that look like? What would be a typical week? And how many athletes would you work with during the week? Um, oh, I could range from anywhere from, you know, one or two through to, um, I think at Brisbane Lions we had, you know, 18 or, or 20 in the rehab group at one stage, which was, you know, it was probably a disaster at the time. But um, I was probably more involved in the late stage rehab. Um, Andrew Lambert, who was a physio there, and, and Randall Cooper looked after the early stage stuff. And um, I was probably more looking after the players that were in that reconditioning mould. Um, so that that's sort of, you know, what it looked like back then. And, and, um, and certainly I... I sort of had a similar sort of role at Brisbane after a couple of years there. What sort of finals campaigns were you involved in with your time at Hawthorne Brisbane? Um, so at Hawthorne, I think we um, got knocked out. Oh, no, so we won the first final and then um, it was a really young group at the time and I don't think too many people sort of expected much success. So we got over the line against Adelaide at uh, Etihad Stadium, but he kicked a goal from the for the boundary, we ended up winning that one. So that was a great experience, you know, first first uh, role in an AFL club and um, we'd won a final. And then I think we got our pants pulled down the next week against North Melbourne. Um, you know, we were sort of uh, still riding that, that win. And um, so that was a really good learning experience for the players, I think, you know, um, and we took that into the next season and won the uh, premiership in 08, uh, which again was a fantastic, fantastic thing to be a part of. Uh, fantastic experience and um, then I think we made the finals the next, no, sorry, we missed the finals next year and then made them but lost uh, week one the year after and um, yeah, didn't make any finals at Brisbane so <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was sort of two different experiences I suppose. We um, had a really young group at Brisbane and were still developing and um, yeah, that, that was a tough environment to, to be in. For guys that are in that similar position, are there certain things that you could uh, advise that you do to build that rapport with the players, but also with, with your, you know, your team? Um, in, yeah, you know, getting I think that connection with your staff? Yeah, I think first and foremost, it's about building trust. So once someone trusts you, then they're more likely to buy in what you're trying to, trying to sell. So, um, you know, if you can give them parts of the program where they've got ownership of it, then they're, they're probably going to be much more receptive. Um, Whereas if you keep them at, at arm's length and say, this is why we're going to do things and you run a, a dictatorship, then they're, you're probably going to get a fair bit of pushback. So um, I think it's, it's building that trust in, in one another and, and developing a, a good relationship where, um, you know, they've got ownership over parts of the program um, and that they can do as they see fit within the framework of, of what you feel is appropriate. That's, that's probably um, the best way to, to go about it, I'd say. Awesome, mate. Well, uh, we've, we've gone through a fair bit of your career. You've also created uh, a business, Dual Performance. For, for those that are not aware of what Dual Performance does, do you want to take us through a bit of a snapshot on, on what you do with the business and, and when it started? Yeah, it sort of started around about the same time I went to China, actually. It was just, um, but, you know, I wanted to start a little side project. Um, people like Grant Jenkins, um, you know, talk a lot about, you know, developing those other income streams as an S&C coach. So that's something I wanted to do. And I started putting out blogs and a little bit of information for 
for strength and conditioning coaches to try and generate some interest in it. But um, I've sort of expanded, I suppose, at the moment. And um, and we pretty much do online programs. So um, just regular gym users can um, sign up and, um, you know, get a get a strength program. It's a, it can be a generic one or it can be really specific based off their needs. And um, my wife's a sports physio, so we're looking to sort of expand that side of it and do some telehealth and, and some other things in that space as well. So it's sort of a it's a little project that's going on in the background, but um, going really well at the moment. Yep. And for for the young developing footballer or, or potentially rugby player that's watching and is eager to get better in in their um, athlete development, what would be some big rocks or some major fundamental things to focus on for let's say a fifteen year old um, that needs to get um, yeah better with their athletic side to help help their performance. Yeah, I think sort of understanding that there's a process that they need to go through. I think everyone wants to go from being a, a junior athlete to, to play at the AFL or NRL level um, really quickly. But they need, I suppose, younger athletes need to understand there is a process. So with that comes setting goals and, you know, making them really clear and achievable. So I might not necessarily, you know, be, I want to play AFL, but you know, improve your 2K time trial or I want to squat 120 kilos or whatever it may be. Um, I think having those those clear goals and, um, you know, engage your coaches to do that, engage your S&C coaches, engage your, your skill coaches to be able to, to be able to help you in those areas. Um, you know, they're, they're, that's probably the, the big one for me is, is set goals and that are clear and achievable and, you know, work out where you're at and where you need to get to and then what does the process look like in between.